live from Bahrain, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live with theCUBE here at Bahrain for exclusive coverage for AWS Summit and the opening in early 2019, just announced previously a few weeks ago, Amazon's opening a region here in the Middle East. It's going to be super uh, impactful in the sense of entrepreneurship, business coming together. I'm John Furrier, your host. We have two guests here, Benoz Kanarth, who's the AVP Head of Cloud and Data Science Engineer at Mindtree, global company, and Snehal Zavery, Service Delivery Manager, Computer World here in Bahrain, partnering. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks thank for coming. You. Thank yep. you, thank you, Jeff. So, Good to be here. Talk about Mindtree first. What do you guys do? Because you now are doing business here. The cloud's here, not new to you guys, but this is an interesting time. It's extremely interesting time. So, we've been doing cloud for 10 years, so we do a lot of digital transformation work. Um, and it's a great time that the government of Bahrain has really decided to go all digital. Um, and I think this is a great, great time for us to be really engaged. And we're very happy to be engaged with the computer world. And what do you guys do? What's your main product? You're doing data science, big data analytics, cloud, DevOps? Yes, that's right. So to give you a sense, uh, if you look at uh, India as a country, uh, so the core citizen identity for India, for all the governance initiatives, which you could say either it's a big data, the data science piece, the entire piece is actually done by us. Uh, so that what that really gives is gives identity to citizens and is the base for all governance initiatives going forward. So building systems like that, where uh, truly touching the lives of folks through digital transformation, where it's fundamentally about cloud, it's a big part of data, and really about how do you drive insights to make this happen is something that we are really working towards. So globally we work uh, with uh, all the two, uh, global 2000 uh, companies uh, doing substantial work. So. so the role of data is a big advantage for Bahrain. They're going to make that a center of advantage. GDPR, it's a nightmare. Everyone knows how bad that is. And you're in living in Europe. People have stopped investing in some cases because of the requirements. So there's some data problems that are hard to solve. Easy to say, hey, let's create data sovereignty. Let's protect consumers. Sounds good but yep. is a hard technical problem. Most people don't even know where their data is, never mind yep. removing, having all these things happen, but the cloud is an opportunity. So Bahrain has identified data yes. as a major advantage. Your reaction to that? Viable? Will they do it? How will they do it? Your thoughts? So I think um, having a region here is the first, first step. And I think the Data Protection Act that has really been launched, I think, gives the firm legal foundations to do that. Once you get onto that, after that, the technology pieces of how to put together, you're exactly right. Cloud is a great way to start, get the data together, design the right foundations to put that together. So I think it is just uh, the right foundation for anything to start. They should give a hall pass for everyone prior to <laughs> cloud. <laughs> I know guys like doing storage, like, wait a minute, where's that data? Because storage is hard. Storage if you're provisioning hard. storage. So incredibly more hard in uh, GDPR is the right to forget. So once somebody says forget me, then going back to all the storages and removing information is even more difficult. Snail, so talk about your role with Mindtree in Bahrain, Amazon. How do you feel about this? Great, I think I, will, I would love to answer this question. So, First of all, we as a computer world, we are three decade old company, more than three decade, and we have legacy. We started with traditional data center and then moved ourselves to virtualization to public cloud, private cloud to public cloud, and from there we have moved ourselves to digital transformation, although it is a big buzzword today, yeah. but then we actually doesn't like disruption. We want people not to be a victim of the disruption, so we always do that that we always innovative, you know, innovate ourselves and keep a pace with industries, where it industries goes. Now, as Bahrain is a company, when government uh, of Bahrain has chosen AWS, a very strong platform. Now, what is missing is the best innovative solutions. You need skills, resources, knowledge, 
to actually leverage this platform which is chosen by governor, government of Bahri. Yeah. So I think as a strategic deal, alliance is must and we have chosen Mindtree looking at their global presence, their IP and we would like Bahrain customers, especially in the public sector and non-public sector, leverage their expertise as working with computer world. So yeah. this is all about we as in computer world, mm -hmm. uh, what we do and with respect to this government of Bahrain initiative, uh, I think we as in we are not citizen, but as in residents of Bahrain, it is really a proud for us that this is not a data center or region for Bahrain. It is a regional data center. We have to definitely look into yeah. that. So that, that's a that's great opportunity. And the thing I want to uh, point out is this big demand from government to move faster, because they're slow generally. But in Bahrain, they're fast compared to other governments, but the private sector is where the action's going to be with entrepreneurship. So I got to ask you guys a question around cloud native. Yes. How do you guys see cloud native architectures? Because you got Amazon's cloud native. Got it. This hybrid cloud, sure, I get that, but cloud yes. native is what everyone's going to be using. Perfect, so before he starts from my side, I will put the foundation and then I think he will take on from there. So very great question. So we see cloud journey in four different phases. The first is migration, which might be the first step, which might not be. But that migration doesn't solve any purpose. We have to move beyond. So that's mm -hmm. where the optimization phase comes. Whatever you have hosted on cloud, how you can optimize it. Maybe one of the example is you can move your database as an infrastructure to the RDS or any other services and so on. From there is the innovative solutions, what you have yeah. to think beyond. Whatever you have today, do it better, do it fast, and help, it should extend to the smart city concept or smart governance concept or something which is beyond the normal data center what can deliver. So this is how we visualize. And from there is the, is the time where you have to start developing native applications, cloud native. You should not think traditionally by hosting and then migrating. You change your mindset, start thinking cloud and living cloud. That's where we are and that's where I think they are You got to jump in. You don't want to do a little bit of cloud. You got to go all in. Because cloud operations is what everyone will end exactly. up doing. Absolutely. Yeah. So globally, any application that you're working today, I think fundamentally we have to think about how it runs on the cloud. So it's inevitable that any new architectures that we do today are fundamentally cloud native, whether those are containers or serverless applications. What's the consequence for people watching that they don't do cloud native? Because this is super important. Yes. The smart, smart money, smart entrepreneurs are, and smart engineers and smart business people are doing cloud native because there are specific things that they benefit from. Yes. What are the consequences if they don't do cloud native? So I think uh, more than consequences, Bahrain is a great opportunity to leapfrog. Because in many places you have decide somewhere, you start with a legacy, then you kind of optimize. And today when you speak about when you're starting applications fresh, I think if you're directly starting on cloud native, the overall operational efficiency of how you build your applications to be more self-healing. Starting fresh and leapfrogging I think is a great opportunity that uh, Bahrain really has. And certainly I mean, one of the consequences might be data impact. Because if you put everything in the cloud, think if you're thinking cloud, you're thinking horizontally scalable. Yes. You're thinking asynchronous. Absolutely. You're thinking parallel. Okay. We're you're thinking, thinking parallel. Auto scaling. Yes. Containers. Microservices. Yes. Fundamentally, service meshes. Yeah. Service meshes. We're thinking about uh, data discovery because you talked about GDPR and the point of resident data. So how do you apply machine learning to really understand the quality of data? How do you discover the right information? Yeah. And then really expose that to the different places. Do you think, do you think machine learning is a great uh, weapon against GDPR or helps GDPR? It helps identify, uh, classify and identify the information. And yeah. even when you're sharing that information, it's a great way for you to actually get a sense of where is the yeah. classification. To do it humanly is not yeah, possible. You program it too. Yes, you program that's the, it that's, the AI, that's yeah. where AI could help you. That's where AI comes. And the second big piece of how uh, the government of Bahrain is really looking at it, when they lie with the fintech companies and the banks, there's going to be a lot of APIs. And I think serverless programming 
uh, with exposing APIs is just the right way for this collaboration it's to really, really happen. Easy. Makes it easy, yeah. makes it easy to try new things out and fail very, very quickly. If you think in terms of services, and there's a collection of services, it's just simply API management, and then you got the future of orchestration with Kubernetes. Kubernetes, yes. And this is where you start to get into the state, stateless applications. Yes. That's where it gets a little bit difficult, there's some work to do there. Some but you can really have some fun with stateless. You can really have some fun with states. And, and, and build some stuff up. True. Build some stuff up, and with the ever increasing uh, stability of the database in AWS, even the stateful applications are uh, much more easier yeah. these days. More work involved on the microservices side, especially across, yeah. Yes, that's Kubernetes true. got some work to do. All right, final question. What's you, what do you think is the impact of Amazon coming to the region? Um, in the short term, medium, and long term, what do you think is the impact of Amazon's region? You want to go first? Yeah, yeah definitely. So, uh, uh, if you talk about the short term, first of all, this is a change of mindset, as I say. And when government of Bahrain and the top, I mean, His Highness is supporting this initiative, so the benefit is the lower cost operation cost has to go down. Yeah. See, this is not something at the one ministry or one enterprise level initiative. This is national level initiative. So end of the day when you consolidate 70, 80 ministries and you shut down the data center and host the data into AWS, then you are going to save a huge cost and that's what AWS is bound for. So with that strong commitment from the cost optimization, then you get the latest technologies. You don't need to keep spending money behind your upgrades and yeah. so on. That's that's buy another. as you go. Uh, buy, buy as you as go. go. Well, buy the other thing, security. By the way, people always complained about security. Oh, cloud is never going to make it. I heard this right out of the gate. Security is more in the cloud in the cloud than it is on premise. We hear C, uh, CSOs, chief security officers, say, "My worst day of security in the clouds." better than the best day on premises. Absolutely, that's true. Absolutely. And I think, uh, really in the short term, I think uh, this is a statement of ambition. I think it really changes the complete mindset of the region itself, in terms of wanting to have the cloud here, becomes the region for all new businesses to come in. And I think, uh, uh, given uh, in the medium term, uh, the number of banks that are actually operate in this region, I think it's going to give a great flip uh, to really make this the key center of all fintech companies going forward. I think the startup initiative with the presence of all the banks, yeah. with a much more open government, I think is the right uh, set of factors yeah. for more startups to come in, for more innovation to really drive in this region. And I think from a long term perspective, it really sets a difference in terms of how the, uh, things actually are going to change and move in this particular place. I think you're right, I think that there's going to be some pull Yes. And that pull's going to be multi-dimensional. Got it, got it. Economic, social, yes. political, and then societal. And societal change of mindset. Yeah, and yeah. as uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed al qaid has mentioned in his keynote, during the keynote, the procurement process has reduced yeah. by 60%. That's unbelievable. It's you know, government with their own... It's going to create a whole new movement from the youth. It's going to be the summer of love. Some are a cloud. Exactly. Because when the young people get a hold of the cloud. Yes. We're talking about young kids now. They've never provisioned Linux. Got it. They've never had a server under their desk. Yes. We're talking about new, new, new developers. New Absolutely. 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 They go, new wait a minute. What do you old guys have to do all this stuff? Exactly. It's like, they go right to machine learning. They go right to AI. They're like, no configuration, no, ro no rock fetches, no mundane tasks. Yes. They want it just to be elastic. Serverless is like exit. serverless. They, they, they go. go right to serverless, and uh, Code Nine is just the right. The way creativity to go. will come from that speed of development. Creativity. Yes. So once that's set, the key is setting it up. Yep. Setting up. And yep. two years down the line, you will see Bahrain might be setting up a very right exam for <laughs> AWS to be given everywhere. You know what we're going to be I doing? Mean, that, that's what for the sure. old guys going to be the investors. We are all, we are all aligned. The cash. That's a good deal, that's a good deal. There you are. <laughs> we are not aligned absolutely with yeah. the government policies <laughs> and we will commit and there is a success guarantee. I wish I was 18 again. What that's I know yeah. now, I'd be killing it in the cloud. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We've been through the, the tough days. True. Guys, thanks so much for coming Thank on, you so much. sharing your insights, great conversation. It's really about what's happening in innovation 
It's about cloud computing, it's about scale, it's about new things. Certainly bring a lot of change and good positive change with challenges as opportunities. Cube's here for the first time bringing it to you. Stay with us for more after this short break.